Hey everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton. How are you doing today? I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. I popped on because I wanted to just talk about something with you, uh, share an experience and kind of contextualize it for us. But before I do, I just wanna invite any and all of you who have not subscribed to my channel to please do so by clicking the subscribe button below and giving me a like, I really appreciate it. Um, and sharing this video too with somebody that you think might find it interesting or might need to hear it. It's funny because I've been on YouTube with this channel. I've had channels on YouTube since YouTube began. Of course, I'm a huge ham. But I've had this channel, I wanna say since 2014 or 2013. I actually don't quite remember, but it's been really slow going in terms of growth. I think we have about 17,000 people now and um, you know, I, I, it's all organic. It's all based on people searching for something at a certain time and finding me. What I hear so much though from people that I come into contact with is that I sort of pop up in their feed or pop up in their awareness at exactly the right time when they really need to hear something or to connect with somebody. So I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for all of my subscribers. Thank you for being here. Thank you for always encouraging me. Um, and just being you. I love you all right. I also want to tell you that I have the um, intuitive intensive that's coming up. This is a 12 week program and oh my God, it's going to be awesome. I think the young kids say it's going to be lit. It's going to be turnt. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be turnt. It's 12 weeks of comprehensive class uh, classes and, and knowledge and information on pretty much all things spiritual and metaphysical, and especially with a focus on psychic abilities and opening up your abilities. I, I kind of don't really like to use the word psychic anymore because it's kind of hokey. Makes people think of some lady in a turban with hoops, you know, asking for hundreds of dollars to remove a curse. And that's, that's a scam <laughs> and that's lame. Um, I like to say intuition, but that's what our focus is. is because we've all come into this world, honestly, with everything we need to be dynamically and evidentially connected to the world of spirit. That includes our angels, that includes our guides, that includes source energy, that includes clairvoyant information, prophetic information, mediumship, all of that stuff is supernatural. Uh, well, wait, super space natural. It's all natural and it's all part of who it is that we are. So this program is all about connecting people with that built-in system, turning it on, whoop, powering it up and then blasting open these abilities and getting them to connect and getting them to do readings and getting them to tap into their inner and outer knowing. So if you're interested in being a part of this comprehensive, wonderful program, go to thelightworkerslab.com slash intuitive thelightworkerslab.com slash intuitive. Check us out. We start the week of February 19th and it's gonna be turnt, as those kids say. All right, today I wanted to talk to you, um, I guess this is kind of a story time. I just wanna tell you a story of something that happened to me many, many years ago and what I think it was and why I think it's important to many of us and that we're probably, a lot of us are experiencing this. Essentially, when I was a teenager, I lived in a really abusive household. A lot of you know, my father was a monster, please hold. <laughs> he was a bit of a monster. And in specific, he was a substance abuser. He liked to drink all kinds of bottles of stuff, but he also uh, snorted Coke and he did black tar heroin. Like he just loved to be checked out. But when he was checked out or when he was altered, he became violent. And he was in particular very violent to my mother, like beat her and beat her and beat her. And you know, there's kind of levels of abuse. You know, some people are abusive, but then there's those people who are really monstrously abusive. And that was my father. He was terribly abusive. And he also didn't really want to fulfill his role as a dad. He wasn't interested in being conventional or traditional in any way. And so we were very poor because he never really had a job. And when he did have a job, it was not making a whole lot of money and he really didn't keep it for very long. So we were poor, he was drunk, and he was violent. And at the time that this particular experience happened, I was probably about 13 years old and we were living in the jungle. Okay, when I say poor, 
that means different things to people. Some people think, oh, well, you know, maybe they were on food stamps, which we were, but we were so poor that we didn't have electricity. We were so poor that we didn't have running water at all. We were so poor that we were hungry all the time. And it was always just a really bad situation. And picture, if you will, this going down on the big island of Hawaii, which is an, which is an outer island, although it's the biggest island, where off the back of my house, off in the distance, I could see these 1,000 foot fountains of lava from the jungle. Nobody lived around us. It was wild. And it was dark and it was the heart of darkness. My father had built us a house. And when I say that, picture camping. It was a shell of a house, really. Our walls were like plywood. Our floors were uncovered. I think they were also plywood or whatever flooring. We didn't have doors. We didn't have, again, running water. My brother and I had our own separate bedrooms, but there, the, there again, there was no doors. and the doorways were really really wide and they opened right into the common areas and the common areas is where my father and my mother used to get into their fights and so one night late at night i'm lying in bed my bedroom is wide open to the common space my father is being abusive to my mother and this is something that just happened like multiple times a week for sure and I was getting real sick of it. I had recently joined a Christian church and become fundamentalist, Pentecostal, those crazy snake wranglers. I became a snake wrangler, but um, I was emboldened a little bit by the language around that faith, you know, the, the power and the glory of the blood of Jesus Christ and how at the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. And so like I was emboldened in a certain way through this system. And that night, I remember feeling a bit emboldened because nobody really ever messed with my father, ever. You never walked up in the middle of him beating my mom or anybody else, she wasn't the only one, and tried to stop him. Like that just, that wouldn't go over for you very well. But that night, it was different. And I remember knowing well in advance of this abusive night that it was going to be a bad night. And I often tell my students that those of us who come from abuse and come from these really dark, hard backgrounds are probably as psychic as we are or as intuitive as we are because of it. Because you learn, don't you, as a child or as somebody who's in an abusive situation to sort of throw out your feelers well in advance of someone coming home so that you can try and figure out and determine whether they're gonna come home in a bad mood, whether they're gonna come home drunk, whether they're gonna come home and start a fight. And so that day leading up to that night, I had felt it was gonna be an effed up night and it was gonna be violent. And sure enough, it started as it, as it always did with a big old jug of wine, one of those jugs with a handle. And my mom and dad starting off really companionable my brother and I just trying to stay out of the way. And then my mother ends up saying just one wrong thing, you know, and it's so innocuous. It doesn't even matter, but it's one wrong thing. My dad takes it wrong and, and says, what? What do you mean by that? And boom, here we go. Here we go. We're going into the fight. And my mom's drunk at this point because into their relationship, she had learned <laughs> it's better to be drunk. <laughs> okay. If he's going to beat me up, it's better if I'm checked out. So she's drunk and when you're intoxicated you really can't navigate the precarious landscape of abuse like you really don't know oh now is my time to exit like you are you do dumb drunk things and my mom would fight back or like t not not physically but she'd argue or she'd talk back which is she's never good so i'm lying in my bed as a 13 year old girl hearing my mom get a little mouthy thinking mom haven't we been here before <laughs> like last night three times last week all of last year like don't you know when you do that it's gonna get really bad but she got mouthy and soon it escalated to violence but you know there was a lot of verbal abuse before then my father was such a smart dude really a smart man and super sophisticated vocabulary like he could tear you down in 17 different ways before you even realized you just got torn down or you just got served. <laughs> he, would, he would take care of that. And, um, but he was also, he's monstrous. 
and his language was ugly and it was crude and it was crass and so before he even put his hands on her he was getting real despicable with the names he was calling her just awful things and I was just lying in bed listening and then the violence started and the violence was bad as all violence is but I mean it was bad it was on the spec on the spectrum it was like trending towards monstrous stuff and at some point my mom got away like she got out of that room and my dad was left sitting in the common area and my brother and I were in our bedrooms and my brother was just he had his Walkman that's what they were called back then he had his little Walkman in and he was just listening to Judas Priest or whatever but I was completely awake and I got up and I walked into the common room where my father was sitting just kind of facing out into the room and I sat in a chair across from him and I just looked at him and I said, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why do you do this every single night? Why do you beat my mom? And again, feeling this emboldened sort of Jesus-y, <laughs> preachy kind of feeling, I just started asking him super pointed questions and looking at him. And the point of this story is to tell you what I saw because he went on to just talk mad crap and it was it was ineffectual but I saw something weird that night all around my father I could see energy and and at that age and now I can see energy around people although it's not as bright it's not as vibrant as it used to be when I was littler or when I was younger but back then I had the full facility and so his aura, I could just see it and I remember it in my mind's eye right now, the aura was just puke pink. You know what I mean? Vomit pink. And it was undulating from his body, just like boom, boom, pulsing. And within that green puke pink aura were all these perforations, these rips, these holes. And into these holes, we're, connect, we're, we're streaming in, we're connected, these weird tendrils, almost like tentacles. But most notably, what I saw was around his head. From about the chest up, there were these talons that were wrapped around his head, like red energy fingers, if you will, tentacles around his head and then right on top of his head. And I could actually see these tentacles going into kind of his head, into his body into his energetic body and at the time all indoctrinated right and crazy i thought well i'm seeing demons i'm seeing a demon behind him with his hands over his head i'm seeing demonic activity around my father and so in my mind and to myself i began to pray and i began to cast things out it didn't change anything ultimately the reason i'm sharing this story is because after all these years I know now what I actually saw that night. And what I saw is something that I think is present in many of our lives and also many of our homes and we don't even know it. We don't even know it. I had just a moment in time where I could actually see a being puppeting my dad, like orchestra, marion marionette puppeting my dad. And as these talons moved, my father's head moved. As this energy undulated, my father undulated. And his eyes, I remember his eyes. He had the most beautiful blue eyes, almost blue like my husband who has gorgeous eyes, aquamarine. But that night they were like rimmed red. And of course we had no electricity and so we had these um, kerosene lanterns around the house and so maybe what I was seeing was the kerosene lantern light in his eyes I don't think so though and the eyes themselves were just like lit from within it was just it seemed demonic but what I was actually seeing was my father's dominant thought form my father's dominant tulpa if you will although I call it a thought form and what a thought form is is just that it's a form of energy that is created through our thoughts. And in specific, these beings are created through our intense feelings and emotions, not just our thoughts. Thoughts don't have as much energy as feelings do. It's when thoughts are coupled with energy that they get very dynamic. 
And if we are expressing or even just feeling emotions that are very intense and in particular, very negative, that energy is being expressed out into the environment because energy doesn't just stop, right? Energy changes, it creates a new form, it transmutes itself into something else. And in the case of thought forms, that anger, that fear, that violence, that intoxication expressed and consistently expressed creates an energetic form. And if given enough time, that energetic form will begin to develop itself. That energetic form, which is a thought form, will always be seeking out the quality of energy that created it, because of course that it's, that's its base signature. And so if my father's violence, for example, had created this thought form, then the being is always seeking out that violent energy because that is what created it and that is what it feeds on. And as this thought form develops, see, it becomes more and more invested in having this energy and manipulating the host of this energy, the person who created it in the first place, continue to create this energy and as thought forms develop they become very intelligent very intelligent and in fact at some point they can even become autonomous meaning they can detach from a host and go find a different host that provides an energy that they want and so on and so forth but all along the development process the thought form becomes more and more intelligent and what they start to do is they begin rigging the host and rigging the space. They begin routing the energy and manipulating what's happening in the person and happening in the home. And so what had happened with my father was, he had spent night after night, right? Week after week, year after year, just expressing out this putrid, violent, intoxicated, malevolent kind of energy. He had never taken the steps to help himself, learn how to cope, learn some coping practices, anger management, therapeutics, analysis, self-help, self-development. That was never an interest for him, ever. And so he just kept spitting it out and he kept developing these thought forms. And what I was seeing that night was just one of them. I was seeing a well-developed, highly intelligent, rigging, puppeting thought form who was puppeting my father and in fact those energies those thought forms existed throughout that entire house and it existed throughout that entire space in various forms of development on each new night of violence a new thought form came into being but the old ones were still there too and soon you see if you keep expressing this kind of an energy you have a whole host you have an entire audience of thought forms that are greedily invested on you continuing to be monstrous or you continuing to be in that lower vibration. My father on his own is accountable and responsible, of course, for all the things that he did wrong and all the people that he hurt, including myself, all the people that he abused, of course. But at some point, it wasn't just my father. There was an entire host of beings pushing him along, spiking his anger, setting up the space in a certain way to create the energy that they wanted from him, setting up the dynamics and the relationships because they can do that. The more you allow them to become intelligent, the more they have the capacity to get in your field and then get into your energy and get into your head. This is what we call the oppression by spirits. Some people might call this possession. They actually get into the thinking, the narratives, the looping, and you're thinking their thoughts, and you're thinking them in alignment with what they want to produce from you. My father was fully puppeted. Now here's what we need to know about thought forms. They are created by us, or the people that we live with, through emotion and thought, but they can also be uncreated by us. The key to eliminating a thought form at any level of development is the cessation of the energy that created it, meaning turn off the lower vibration, turn off the energy that brought it into being. 
This energy can be violence, it can be intoxication, and intoxication, by the way, is a powerful expression of energy. It's a powerful signal that does more than just create thought forms for real, okay? It calls so many things to you when you're super altered and intoxicated, but it's not just violent energy, okay? It's not just altered, intoxicated energy, it's also depression, depression. It's also deep grief. That's got a really strong signal. It's also anger and frustration, road rage. It's also anxiety and paranoia and frustration. It's these lower negative signature, unchecked emotions and thoughts that we are signaling with at all times that create these beings. And so to uncreate them, we have to fix the energy. The host has to fix itself. The host has to determine for itself that it will be signaling differently. And so had my father had a moment of clarity, say, and said, oh my gosh, I'm creating my environment. I'm creating this landscape. I'm creating these drivers and riggers and routers in my environment. He could have done something like got sober. He could have done something like take anger management, although they didn't have that back in the whatever 80s. He could have done things though to, to clean up his energy and in specific to align and straighten out his signal. Because here's, here's the truth. We are always signaling, always. When we're happy, we're signaling. When we're unhappy, we're signaling. When we're sad, we signal. When we're glad, we signal. And where does that signal go, my friends? The signal goes into the responsive universe and the responsive universe does not care what the signal is. The responsive universe doesn't say, hey, wait a minute, Dennis Milligan, that was his name. You are sending a monstrous, violent, intoxicated signal and that is gonna cause me, universe says, to send back to you conditions and experiences and energies that are a match for that. No, the universe doesn't do that. The universe doesn't judge the signal, it just responds. It's an organism that works in perfect concert with us. And so if my father had found a way to clean up his signal, he would have cleaned up his life. He would have uncreated this being that I saw puppeting him. Now, how many of us right now are living in bad situations? How many of us are living in a bad state of mind? A lot of us don't really pay attention to the mind, do we? We don't really listen, we don't observe it. But if we did, what would we hear? What would we hear us saying about other people or about the world or about our possibilities? Indeed, what would we hear ourselves saying about ourselves and what we think about ourselves and our perception of self would our inner narrative reflect the divine nature of who it is that we are? Or would we hear on an endless loop all the things that are wrong, all the things that are not working, all the things that are lower in vibration that we carry within us? Many of us would hear a lot of negative things. And if we want to change the life, we have to change the signal. The thought contributes to the signal, yes. The emotion amplifies and sends out the signal, yes. But you, the consciousness, the raw consciousness, controls the signal. That's how it works. Many of us are living in abusive situations right now. Many of us are abusers. Many of us verbally abuse, take advantage of. Many of us are being abused. Many of us have anger problems. Many of us live with people who have anger problems, but we're living in spaces that are creating thought forms because somebody in this space, whether it's us or them, is churning out thought forms like it's their job and they're not taking care of themselves. And so there's no hope that they're gonna cut off the energy form that's feeding these beings. And soon, week after week, month after month, now year after year, we've been in these marriages, these relationships, these friendships. Soon, we've got an entire orchestrated construct that serves the purpose of the low vibration and serves the purpose of the low energy. The good news again is what can be created can also be uncreated. That doesn't mean the intelligence of the thought form suddenly just stops and no longer exists because energy doesn't ever just stop. It just changes form. 
But when we're conscious and cleaning up our signal, we can eliminate, dissipate those thought forms so that they leave our environment, they leave our incarnation, this 3D reality. Absolutely, it can be done. But where I think so many of us require bravery and courage is in the accepting of the reality that we're living with people who are creating these thought forms. We're living with people who aren't taking care of themselves. We're around people, maybe we work with people who are not mindful of their signal and therefore we are forced to be in environments where we've got the whole thing rigged and we can try and be as high vibration as possible in that situation. And some of us, we get far with that. But if we don't change something, if we don't clear the signal, it's really hard, no matter how, how high vibration you are, to not be affected by all of the energy that is reflective of the energy that created it. I have some students, I have some clients who are in really bad marriages and for whatever reason they don't feel like they can get out of them. They are married to abusers, right? They know it. They know that they're being damaged daily by these people, either verbally or emotionally or physically. But again, they, they don't think they can leave. And I tell them, then this is it. Like this is, this is really what you have. You can clean it up. Like you can go in with your sage stick, sure. And your salt and your resonance and your essences. And you can clean the space and you can clear out the thought forms, but they'll come right back because the signal that's created it hasn't stopped. The only way we can take care of ourselves when we are around and proximate to abusers is to remove those abusers from our lives. I mean, well, we could start by maybe getting them some help. Sure. We could start by maybe making it mandatory that they go to counseling or go to a doctor or get some help. But if they don't, and if they don't mind their own vibration and their own signal, we have to do something about it. Otherwise, we are playing a losing game. That night, looking at my dad, I didn't, I didn't really know the importance of what I was seeing, but I was seeing it. It was animated, and it was real, and it was intelligent, and my father had given himself over to it. He fed it and it fed him and it spilled over into every area in that house, into my bedroom, my brother's bedroom, into my mother's life because of his signal. See, nowadays, I'm very particular about who I spend time with, very particular because so many people are creating things and so many people are in a kind of vibration or an energy and don't even know it. So. I'm very particular about who I expose myself to. Not like that. Don't be like that. I'm very particular about who I expose my energy to because energy is always impacted by other energy and people are energy and I'm careful about that. How careful are you with that? Are you living with somebody right now who's doing damage to you? Are you doing damage to you? Do you feel like you're caught in an endless loop that never seems to end, a cycle of addiction, a cycle of abuse, a cycle of depression, a cycle of fear, a cycle of anxiety. Well, there may be more to it than just what you're feeling. It may be in your environment and there are things that you should be doing right here and right now. First thing to do is set the intention to absolutely flip the script and change it so you can live a better life. You can live a happy life. Anyway, I wanted to share that with each and every one of you. Um, I'm writing a book right now. I'm actually writing it with somebody. And we're going through various experiences that I've had. I've had a lot of paranormal experiences. I've had a lot of um, signs and wonders types of experiences. But I tried to pick some in which I ended up being victorious. Or I ended up getting the information and knowledge from the experience that I needed in order to help myself or to help other people. And that story was one of them, because I'll never forget it. I can see it like it was yesterday. Wow. 
All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this if you find it interesting or if you think it might help somebody. And don't forget to go to thelightworkerslab.com and join us. We're a Facebook group full of awesome people. We always have something going on in the lab. We have readers and healers and teachers. It's all free to members. Go to thelightworkerslab.com. Check it out. I hope to see you there. Bye, guys. Have a great day.